Hey guys, so today for this tutorial, it's going to be about a, basically an introduction to how to auto track and export a scene into Maya or After Effects, whatever format that you'd like in PF Track 2011. So the first thing that you need to do, of course, is start up the program. So once you got to start up, you get to this screen right here and you want to select your media bin. Okay, so select that. You might get this screen or that screen. doesn't really matter as long as you can find your footage. I have mine already selected right here, known as MVI or Movie 3799. So what I'll do now is I'll drag the footage thumbnail to this right here, known as my tree editor. Or the tree viewer. Yeah, tree viewer. Okay, now you want to select play right here, or known as forward play, so you can cache in all of your frames. Okay, now that's done. All right, all our frames are nice and cached in. Make sure your frame rate is the one to shot at. Uh, your in point should be the first frame, which should be number one, I think. Uh, your out point should be your last frame. Make sure your preset is all correct. Your film back is set, and there's no deinterlacing. Okay. Now what you want to do is go back to your tree view right here. Select your video thumbnail. Right click and select auto track. So for a good track to happen, um, obviously I have a very good playing field to be able to track on as I made all these crosses on this piece of paper. So let's put in a candidate number of trackers around, let's say, 300 and a target number of, uh, I'm going to say 225. So it has a good amount to screw around with. So make sure your candidate number is good. Depending on what you are tracking, your feature scale for this would be small. Your proxy is good. Search mode, I always like to kick it up to better accuracy as much as I can. Deformation, none at all. Okay. Now we have all that set. You want to select now auto track or shift A. So now it will auto track. Depending on the speed of your computer, it may do it slowly. It may do it fast. This will probably take around a good uh, five minutes. So we'll come back when this is done. All right, now it's okay. Now, if we go scroll through, we can see we got lots of good tracks here. Okay, so after checking that your tracking points are all set, you need to select in the tree viewer your auto track thumbnail, and now you have to go down three to select the camera solver. Okay. So you just want to immediately check to see if your focal length is set. I shot this at about uh, almost 18, somewhere like 17.9. Okay, focal range is good. Field of view, film back is excellent as it should be. Okay, now you just like, select this button right here and click it. Name is solve all or alternatively shift plus S. Okay, so let's just wait for this thing to go. Okay, now the scene has been solved by the camera. Now what you want to do is you can get any of your tracking points and set it as your origin. So I'm going to go right here in the middle of this paper, uh, auto number 692, and set this button right here for the origin. Okay, now you want to go select your camera solver node here, right click, and select orient scene. Now what you want to do is you want to orient the scene well, your ground plane by going to the orientation right here under edit mode and selecting either rotate, translate, whatever. And you want to orient the ground plane grid as well as you possibly can. So, let's see. Okay, now we have the rotation more or less oriented, but it's still just a bit jittery. So let's try moving it down with the translate. Okay, so now that I've oriented my scene somewhat well, now it's time to throw in a test object. That ah, looks pretty smooth so far. So we'll click under our last edited node, right click onto it and select test object. Okay, let's put in something like a uh, thumbtack, all right? Now let's set it to our origin if we'd like, just so we can get a good reference of what it is and plus play and see what it looks like. Okay, looks pretty good. Little, little, very, very small amounts of movement going to the left, but if we just raise the vertical, uh, the plane vertically just a bit, that should get rid of it, but looks pretty good so far. So now we'll just delete this node just to be clean, and we'll select our last edited node, and now we select export. Okay. 
check the format to whatever uh, program that you're going to be importing this into as After Effects or Maya. I'm going to be importing this to Maya. Make sure the scale, uh, if you want, you can set it down just a bit as your scale is the size of your grid. I'm going to use this as, uh, let's see, 1.2. Yeah, that seems about good. Okay, you want to get rid of the ground and the horizon, at least in Maya you would. And make sure you have the names and info and make sure it's showing all the trackers. And make sure your camera is set to the one that we've solved it from. And now we export the scene, or shift plus E. Alright, let's check that out in Maya. So now if we open that up, we should see the tracking points. Okay, there you go. We just need to load up the image plane later in an image sequence, but at least now we have the tracking points. So there you go. We have the tracking cloud all prepped and ready to go. So, so that's how you guys auto track from PF Track 2011, orient the scene, solve for the camera, and export it out to any of your favorite 3D applications. So this has been a digital drop block tutorial, and I'll be seeing you guys.